Very well, welcome back to Let's Play The Other Crimson Eclipse. Last time, we completed the corridor of dusk. After doing a whole lot of farming. And now that every one of my four favorite characters is a level 99, we're ready to take on the stairway to night. Which, incredibly enough, does not only contain the super boss, but it does contain it's another enemy. This enemy sucks. Like it's this him. dragon. It opens with collapse appearing every time. And Dao is dead. Awesome. Oh god, why Dao can you never dodge attacks? Seriously. So we're gonna start with an absolution here. Uh, we are going to do... Uh, this dragon is fast as hell. Oh, we can analyze it actually. Let's look at him. Oh, uh, actually, let me do first. Um... You know what? Uh, do we have like shooting shards? Yeah, there you go, shooting shards. Okay. Might as well pop the shooting shards since we're not gonna use them after this fight and the super boss. This guy has 120,000 HP. A reptile, weak to nothing. This guy has pretty much the strongest moves in the entire game, offense wise. He is not to be taken lightly. Not at all. You're gonna see this guy at work. Ah, oh, he means business. He has so many HP. Ah, oh, right. Oh, how much is the right blade level three gonna do? Oh yeah, max damage. Oh, uh, I don't think I should neutralize. I'm not in the condition to neutralize this yet. Marty has like 2,000 HP. Not good. Is this gonna kill her? Okay, only all health. No big deal. We can just heal that. Yeah, it's weird to say, yeah, only elf elf, no big deal. <laughs> but, trust me, this guy is a pain in the ass. A major one of that. Um, I could just do a right blade. It, it can do status sale, but as you can see, we are in depression, but honestly, it doesn't really do that many. It is more like an all of offense guy, you know, the room Hyperion. He's got all the elements Hyperion version. Of the spells, so uh, we'll see Vulcania Hyperion, uh, Fulgur Hyperion, and then Sisma Hyperion. Sisma Hyperion in particular sucks because it's body damage. I don't know if you can do more gravity collapse, but. No gravity collapse, yeah, uh, whatever it is, the opening move. But I wouldn't be surprised if it could. Maybe after a certain amount of turns have passed, he could, can do that again. Uh, probably. Um, uh, just go ahead. I can do Arcane Aura now. If I can keep Marcus Peace high, I can get out a lot of Heroic Blades. This is pretty tough for an enemy. And it takes a while to kill it, actually. So it's actually a pretty interesting challenge. There we go, Sisma Perry sucks so much. It deals so much damage. Thank God we have Floor and we have Regen. That pretty much can offset all the damage. Give me, give me a second here. Healing Opal. Okay, I just want to check the positive state here. I was wondering why Seth wasn't doing a lot of damage. I thought his shards weren't working for some reason. No, they are. They are. It's just that this enemy is just so strong. That's the problem. This burst is through just fine, though. Ice also is in area. Wow. Oh, fairy and you do. Eh, whatever. Let's do this. Do anything. My soul rages within me. You're mine. Well, gravity collapse or whatever it's called, that's not really. It's not scary as long as you have more than 5,000 HP. So, if you bring like Neville and make sure they have 9,000 health, they'll be just fine. Fortunately, Dial is like. It, she doesn't even hit 5,000 at level 99. She just has very low HP. Uh, speaking of the. Um, we definitely don't want to see that again, so keep using floor and keep as, as high as possible in health. Okay, come on guys. We can do it. One right blade after another. There we go, he's dead. That's the only time you're ever going to see him. Damn, this guy sucks. Good, huh? Okay, now that we've done that, we're actually going to go back and grab some rewards because there are three treasure chests here they all contain alpha seals so no mini bosses to fight 
We only have the super boss left. Of course, you can fight that dragon multiple times. He's a repeatable fight, but it does give it does give a lot of rewards. Like you've seen a lot of experience APs and Zenith, but it's not worth it to fight that guy just if you want to farm because it just takes forever. Uh, what am I doing here? I don't even know. Let's go into a treasure room now. Now, while we get the last treasures, I actually tried to finish the game already by getting all this, these things here. It might happen that when we'll check out for 100% at the ranking screen, we might be short one treasure chest. And I don't know what, 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 why, because I pretty much checked all of the treasure chests in the game. I have a, like a checklist. I've been going through all of them. And I think I've got them all, but I suspect that there is one treasure chest in the game somewhere that does not incre increment the counter. Either that, or I missed some f something somewhere, and but it's not a big deal because to get max rank on treasure chest, you only need 340 out of 350 that there are in the game. So it's not a big deal even even if we miss one. It's really not a big deal on the ranking. Speaking of what we got. Uh, we've got a couple of equipments here. We've got the Astralia, which is set only. Exceed damage plus 50%, 100 strength and 20 spirit. We're gonna slap it on him. On Marty, we're gonna keep the Epic Garb. Uh, we gotta remove Azara's memories from Farian, though. Uh, Del has a Geno memories, and that's fine. I think I've got. Also, I don't think last time I showed this. The Reason of Cause. I don't think I did. Uh, where is... God, I can't find it. There it is. I don't think I showed what the Reason of Cost does. It's kind of crappy. Neon only. Guard removes all the negative statuses. I mean, it's okay. It's not crappy, but... <laughs> Are you even going to use Neon at this point? And I think I've got the Platinum Lion. Okay. Neville only. Grants Elemental Resistance. It's basically the, the Wolf of Mishra slash Grant. And I think it has the same effect. Reckless Shield Focus. Yeah, it's an, no, it's not an Epic Garb because the Epic Garb grants Mastery Plus instead of Exceed Plus. This grants Exceed Plus in place of that. Okay, so it's a little bit different. But it's basically an Epic Garb. Uh, that being said, there's one last piece of equipment that we've yet to see that we just picked up. And that'd be what goes on Farian. We have this Gravata. All stats to 999. It, this is, this is great. And it's Gravata, by the way. What that means, it's a fusion of two Italian words. Well, mo mainly one. Well, there are actually two, but one is more like a, a dialect type word. It's the fusion between Grava and Cravata. And Grava basically means overpowered, and Kravata means tie. So it's, this is an overpowered tie, which sets all of your stats to 999, no matter what you have, because it increases by 999, so you're setting to, to that number, basically. With the Vinitas, we're doubling those stats, so Farion has like 200, 2,000 in all stats, pretty much. And with Falco, we have 100% accuracy. That means we're going to do... A minimum of 6,000 damage to all enemies every turn Farion gets. This combination destroys the game. Which we're going to see at the Super Boss. Speaking of that, uh, have we full restored? Not quite. Uh, we still have the dragon to deal with, though. We can still run away from him, though. Now, if we get into a fight, he's going to collapse Hyperion, though. That's the problem. Okay, so the thing is... Is he gonna... Okay, I think I can go through! Yes, nice! If he's far away on the left or the right, you can just sprint up and he'll miss you completely. But it can be rough sometimes, especially if you don't have Ruder. If you have Ruder, it's not a big deal, because you can just slow him down. Uh, what am I doing here? I think I'm looking for a speed. I think I'm looking for this. Okay, let's see. Yeah, fill that up. HP, we're... HP wise, we're okay. Everybody's fine. Let me review my gear one more time. Double X Fighter Australia. 
Tank Girl Megan Pretty Fear Terno Epic Garb is fine. This is fine. Uh, this is not fine. Uh, we might need to remove remove positive states. Where is Re Rezilo? There it is. Excaster is great. In case we mess up, we'll have dials exceed ready to go and automated, it, of course. Always nice. Okay. We're ready. Let's face them. So, you are the fearless heroes that opened the gate to our dimension, aren't you? The rage you feel for us and for the unknown that always lead you to destruction. Everything you don't know is your enemy and must be erased. We accepted your way of being and we created a new world for the two of us. A dimension far away, separated from the material world. But this isn't enough for you. You came here to hunt us down, in our new home. Why can't we live our lives in peace? Why are you hunting us, humans? We never wanted to destroy your kin, but you desecrated our home, and we can't forgive you. You will be erased from the history of the cosmos. We've heard about them, but we have never seen them before. Take a look at Regina and Azaros. Yeah, these two guys, the first Vashners. These are the super bosses of the Extreme World DL. They are not that bad. I consider them easier off the, easier than the mouth and the eyes, but they can still pack some punishment. Regina. 100,000 HP. Humanoid. Weak to nothing. She's basically like a mage type of character. She can do, can do a lot of deep buffs. She has an instant death spell too. And uh, Azaris, 150,000 HP. Humanoid, weak to nothing, resisting, resist a bunch of status. And he's more like a physical fighter, although he can also buff, and that's gonna be pretty annoying. Thank god we have Dial that can remove that. So of course we're gonna go for Regina first, she's really the most annoying. She has less HP, and the death spell, I want that out as soon as possible. Um, I will, let's see, uh, I think I'll go Lady Diva on set, I have a plan. I can use Dial Turn to use Neutralize this, make it this go a lot faster. Once one is down, it's really it. Because then you only suffer one attack per turn. That missed! Uh, I don't know what Pillburst does. It does a lot of damage, but I'm pretty sure he can inflict a status too. That's a basic physical. Wow, that didn't do a lot of damage. Let's see if we can see some of the dangerous stuff. All in all, they're not really that scary. Unless they're starting to do a lot of the scary stuff and you're not gonna see any of the normal like non-damaging ones quote-unquote uh what was i going to do vinyl tear i don't really need to heal fairy that much i can just neutralize this at zaros and at that point i'm done with the neutralizers fairy can just attack and do that much damage yep he is around the i told you fairy is going to do six a uh, medium of six thousand damage per turn he gets Mastery down and exceed down sucks right now because our mastery is super low. We're not into, even into region yet. Oh well, figure it out. We'll figure it out. I can absolute fairy actually. I can heal some HP. Or remove, we remove the those statuses. That'll be a good solution. That seems like nice. Um, at this point, I will arcane aura Marty because I don't need to heal. I cannot damage with dial. This is the insta kill. There it is. Oh god, the insta-kill sucks! As it should. It's an insta-kill. What, what am I expecting? Of course it sucks. Life drains in here. Uh, don't kill him. Ah, come on, dude. I just brought him back to life. There you go, come back. Come back here, Farian. We need you. We need your 6,000 damage. Yeah, I'll lose this mastery and exceed down eventually. We need to build that mastery. Oh, come on, you're doing that again? Okay. They're not being nice today. They're not being nice. Farion, you heal up. Nice, okay, there we go. Now we got a bit back in control here. Just a tiny bit. I missed again, wow. This is the second time it misses in a row. 
Okay, and Regina's down, so at this point, we got only Hazaras to worry about. And it's not that scary. Without his partner, it's really not that scary. You can still one-shot characters if you... If you just don't... If you just let him to his own devices, but... Uh, if you just keep con the fire under control, again, he's not scary at all. But he's gonna pop Moonlight Breaker, do a lot of damage, and then we'll work it from there. Weirdly really enough, our mastery is not even reached level 2 yet. That's the fault of all those mastery down you've seen. Ah, that does a lot of damage, that's almost 20,000 total. That's gonna do a number on him. Shield Bash. Ah, then Flicks Block. That's an annoying one. He hasn't even buffed yet. He has two buffs. One that does, uh, one that does Reckless and one that does Shield and Focus. Pretty sure he's gonna use one eventually. Unless for some reason we, we're so strong we're just gonna kill it first. Well, we'll see. At this point, it's just a matter of, again, it's just a matter of keeping the battle under control, no, not making any stupid mistakes, and keep the damage going. And we'll be over before you know it. We got a reason. Everything is fine. Uh, does Imperial work on you? Well, kind of. It did a thousand damage, but so it's not really worth it. Oh well. Stop using physical attack. Just do something better. Just. But I won't. I won't let him time to. I won't give him time to show any of the scary moves. Definitely, you want to remove the reckless status once once he does it, because at that point he gets like twelve thousand strength, something like that. And at that point, he can really one-shot characters. Well, maybe he cannot one-shot Seth. But maybe Fairy and Dial can, because they don't have a lot of HP. Speaking of Dial, what am I going to do with you? Everybody, no, Fairy is not full HP. There you go. And that's it. So I gave Dial Redzilo because of those buffs. If he... If he had cast them, I would just remove them early, which would have helped a lot. That wasn't the case, though. Why can't we live our lives in peace? Because we had to get an extreme trophy. That's all you get. And that should be shown off over here, page two. Yeah, Arena Tail Trophy. You conquered your Arena Tail. Uh, wait, no, it's not Arena Tail. Sorry, it's the Extreme Trophy. But if it gets Arrows and Regina, you complete the Extreme Ordeal. Good. We got it. Extreme Ordeal done. We have no more business in this stupid place. Oh, uh, guys, the dragon's still here? Oh, God, no. Okay, okay. Get out of here, dragon. Don't want any of that. Go away. Go away. Okay, it went down? What the hell? Come back here. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna skip the aggroing event. The hell with that. I didn't want to do that, but hey. Okay. Uh, well, I can save the game in my other slot. It's fine. Now that we've completed the extreme ordeal, we have a bunch of things left to do in the Albatross. We have to clean up and do all the things to reach 100%. We're also going to check all of these um, statues over here. Actually, I could do that right now. Or maybe not. Let, let me do that later. First, I want to finish everything to get 100 to 100%. First, I want to get Rudra in the party. And you'll see why in a second. I mean, Rudra here. There we go. So, I upgraded off-screen all of the character's weapons to level 3 and all of their abilities to level 3. Except Rudra's. Rudra mi is missing one ability and one weapon, which we're gonna do on-screen. So, inner peace. There you go. And that should give me... You fully upgrade all the skills, you, you, you get skills trophy. It's still in Italian. The more you know. The more translations error you know. <laughs> oh god. Uh, and then... Is this gonna... Is this gonna happen? On this upgrade too? Let's see. 
All the weapons are level 3, let's see. It's still there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> it's still there, okay. You fully upgraded all cards as weapon. You get weapons trophy. Yay! So, let's see. Oh, we're going trophies now. We're missing three. Okay. So, we're missing the bronze trophy. Learn the secrets of alchemy. You'll obtain this trophy. Let's do that. Let's do that. Off screen, I've made a bunch of alchemies. As I said, the best way to raise your alchemy level is to dissuade a bunch of Philosopher's Stones. They're super cheap. I don't think these are cheaper. Soul Diamond, Soul Opal. Healing Diamond, Healing Opal. No, I don't want that. Thank you. They might, these might be cheaper. Some of those might be, yeah, definitely some of those are cheaper. But I always did Philosopher's Stone because if you create a bunch of Silver Stone, then you can create the Vinitas's. So. Yeah. And also, Philosopher's Stones are pretty good in battle. But if you want stats, it has to do the others. Not that you really need to. Anyway, we're going to make unique items now. So we're going to do the Expert, yeah. Now, the Sapphire Necklace. That is kind of cryptic. You might not have the Sapphire Necklace, and that's because you have to buy it in Benedicta. There's a one shop that sells it. If you don't have it, go there, check all the shops. You'll eventually find the Sapphire Necklace somewhere. So that gives us the Expertia Neon Only. Obtain more APs after battle and 120 spirit. With, for this, we need Aura's Armor, which you should have in your inventory. I don't think you can sold it, sold, sell it either, so... We get the Oakwork of Ra, Horus only. Effect, Autogenesis, Resistance to Wind and Light. 100 Strength and 100 Resistance. Not bad. Cape of the Ocean. With the High Marine Uniform, which is Allison Starting Armor. And in fact, this is an Allison only armor. Effect, Auto Meditate. Auto Meditate is actually awesome. Resist status is 90%. Under Resistance, Under Spirit. This is an awesome armor for Allison. If you like Allison, this is... Awesome to get it. All right, get it. Because automated is just that's that's 90% of the reason why you want it. The Royal Manteau, you need a noble suit, which I think is Neon Starting Armor. It might be. Because this is for Neon only. However, the young Neon, the Neon on chapter 4 6. That one. Stellar resistance 60%, hunter resistance on the spear, not bad. And finally, the Omega Touch armor. Which needs the Cracked One armor, which is the which is set starting armor, and this gives a, a armor for set only. Reckless on battle star, 120 strength. Actually, I don't like this because well, Reckless on battle star is kind of weak. You can just put X caster. You get that. You get it for an inheritance Reckless and a bunch of strength. Like the what set as right now is far better. But I guess, hey, if you haven't completed the Extreme Ordeal, that's a good alternative. Anyway, once you've completed all of the alchemy objects or items, congratulations, guys, you created every unique item. Here, take this. I would have never made it this far in alchemy without your help. And we got the alchemy trophy. I think I remain on the Albatross for a while. Come to see me if you need anything. I'm always happy to help. Sure, Adam. Let's see that. Yeah, we got it. You created all the atoms as unique items. Now, collect the 99 guy shards and completing all the missions. Okay. Uh, we have, let's see, missions. Missions, yeah. Okay, so we have the, the 99 shards and the incomplete weaponomicon. We have all the weapon, all the weapons, all the pages of the weaponomicon, but in order to complete the mission, you need to check the weaponomicon once you have all of the all the pages and we're gonna check the lunar black which we have not seen and there it is attack command can inflict exhaust the status with a 30% chance of success not bad and in normal battles it's actually pretty good and that should complete the mission let's see yeah we got it incomplete weapon omicron is now complete now for the 99 shards we should be able to deliver them to the altar and in theory we have all of them i checked a couple times off screen just to make super sure but we should have all of them let's see i'm gonna go to Riken. to the altar 
Oh, since we're here, might as well show you, Benedicta, uh, where the shop that sells the sapphire necklaces. I think it's on the right. First shop on the right is this one. Is it you? Yeah, there it is, sapphire necklace. So if you're missing that one, which on one playthrough it, it happened to me, then I was like, what the hell? Where's this armor? Isn't this supposed to be a, like a unique armor like the others? No, you just have to buy it from the merchant, which I never bothered doing it in the first place when I came here during the plot. So I was like, what the hell? Where is this thing? I had to ask on the Discord. And then they said, oh, look, you just have to buy it in Benedicta. Oh, okay. I was like, no, oh, that was dumb. We got 99 out of 99 Gaia shards. And if we talk to... Well, there's a treasure chest there, but... I think we have to talk to the altar again. Yeah. You gave Arithil a new hope. Now it hold the original light until the day comes. This, in theory, is the last treasure chest in the game. You deliver all Gaia shards. This is your reward. You get the original light and the shards trophy. Now we can actually... Yeah, you complete all the side quests. You have the in-quest trophy. Yeah, thank you. I, I just wanted to check the original light description. Let's go all the way down to the key items. Original light. The 99 Gaia shards radiate this mysterious light. This is the item that will unlock some special content after you defeat the final boss, but only if you're playing hard. Okay, back on the Arbitress, I think we're done here. Let's see. Missions. We got all of them, right? Trophies. Got all of them. Ebooks, we got all of them. I think we have only two things left. Uh, one thing that you need to do for ranking is Borghetti Shop. Be sure you to have it at level 10. Another thing we need for ranking are Mastery's abilities. You need to have learned all of them. You don't just need to have the item that unlocks them. You actually need to learn them. So, uh, we go into Mastery. And we're going to learn all of the ones that we have not seen. So, Lion Strength. All Wisdom. We're just going to check them out pretty quick as well. I'm just going to mash through this learning prompts. Learn. 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 You can see the cost right there. And there we go. We got them all. So Lion Strength is up strength. Bear's Endurance, we used it during the plot, is ups your resistance. Old's Wisdom ups your spirit. Link's Grace ups your dexterity. Innate Gift, I use this for farming in the extreme ordeal. Increases amount of experience awarded in battle. Pretty useful. Fast Learner, increases amount of APs awarded in battle. Greed increases the amount of Zenith awarded by battles. Elemental Guard grants varying elemental resistances. On level 1, Earth and Light. On level 2, Earth, Light, Fire and Dark. And level 3, All Elements. Level 2 is not that bad, actually. It can be useful. Shard of Light increases Exceed Techniques damage. This is pretty awesome if you can reach the level. Like, even level 2 is pretty great. Exceed damage plus 35%. Salvation Barrier grants increasingly effective physical resistance. I don't know if I showed this. Level 2 Auto Shield is actually pretty nice. Level 1 is kind of meh because you're losing some strength. Like, maybe... But level 2 Auto Shield... It's good from start to finish. And level 3 kind of sucks. Immunity to stun attacks. It also was a bit glitchy in some versions of the game. I don't know if this can still be glitchy. But if you were in the first half of the game and you pop the level 3, the set would just start doing the lightning at random, but not the move, like, it would do the animation. The animation of the lightning became his idol move, it was something very weird. <laughs> but I think that was fixed. Uh, regeneration, well, we've seen this, we've seen it, I don't need to explain it anymore, we pretty much use it for the entirety of the game. Great Fortitude protects the party from status ailments. Uh, not bad, but what if you had turn now? Come on, dude. <laughs> That's much better. Uh, superior intellect is pretty nice. SP consumption halved. You get auto frail, which is half your uh, halves your resistance on level one. On level two, though, it's SP consumption halved. That's it. And level three, you also get auto focus. Eh. Eternal knowledge is awesome because it's regeneration on your SPs. And apparently, for who used this, for who uses it. They say it's pretty good. 
and I have to believe them. Violent out outburst. This is very weird. You get strength and auto fury. On level 3, you get auto genesis. Uh, I don't know. What's the point? I think this was just, it's just here. Does it have, even have any uses? Any practical uses? Uh, not sure. Maybe if you just wanted to do a, a challenge, maybe. That, that's, that's the only reason why I'd see the succeed there. Now, th those are the mas I mean, I, I, did I just say exceed? Wow. The mastery. <laughs> the mastery. Anyway, those are the mastery abilities. Now, yeah, I think we've got everything. We just need to check all these statues. So, ready for some trivia? Let's go. Seth Sheridan Sidris. Date of birth June 7, 2288. Seth was the last character to be final finalized, both on the gameplay and the story side. The very last thing we decided about the main character was its name, Seth. Yeah, I told I said that in the LP sometime, I don't know when. This name had earlier been adapted as a placeholder to be later substituted with something more fitting, but the final version retained it. And we decided to play with the ancient mythology through the duel between Seth and Horus. The decision to make to change Seth's appearance mid-game was taken with the release of Tia's demo. We wanted to give Seth a new identity, turning him from a conflicted, weak-willed fighter to a much more resolute hero. This change needed a visual counterpart. Yeah, some of those things they will hear, I already said that during DLP, but... There might be something that I haven't touched upon, so we'll better check all of these. Rudra Marut, date of birth January 25, 2237. The first real plot twist in Tia is certainly the discovery that Rudra is the real target of the Scarlet Worms at the beginning of the game. Honestly, I have to tell you a fun fact about this. When I first played Tia, I did I, I actually uh, guessed that he was the target. Because if you remember the scene, they were like... Uh, Seth and Rudra, they were like going in town. And the Worms said, the target is now in town. And the game wants you to think it's sad, but I thought, wait, it might be Rudra too. So I kind of guessed this on my first playthrough. In the first version, this was made clear much earlier when the Scarlet Worms attacked Rail. There, the assassins called Rudra, called Rudra out for being a traitor, making Seth the center of the action. We decided to save that reveal for a different moment in an effort to make it feel more meaningful. Yeah, that was a nice choice. Nadia, Rebecca, or, well, Nadia Cross, or Rebecca Imperia. Date of birth, December 3, 2292. In the first version of Tia, then called Magical Arts, the Tia, or Moon People, did not only possess arcane powers, they were also characterized by their ability to fly, thanks to their large wings. As a Tia, Nadia had wings as well. This characteristic was later deleted for two reasons. It wasn't necessarily aesthetically in line with the rest of the game, and the game itself didn't make proper use of their flying ability. Got nothing to say on that one. Farion Vidar, date of birth, September 22, 2285. Farion's probably the character was seen the most revisions throughout the development of Tia. Even his name was changed. Ikari, as he used to be called, was an assassin employed by Raiken. In the plot, he helped Seth escape. But this fact, combined with the general design, made the whole event too close to a Deus Ex Machina. Farion's second vision was much more similar to the two characters he finally became. <coughs> to the character he finally became. The only two differences being his air caller and his main weapon, an eagle called Stark. This is why an eagle can often be seen in Farion's concept art dated 20, 2012. I don't think I have that. Uh, I might want to put that on screen somewhere. I'm not quite sure if I can find it. If I can find it, you'll be seeing it somewhere on the screen. If I cannot find it, you will not be seeing it. Marty Athena, Chesterfield. Date of birth, March 12, 28, 2288. Initially, the story did not include the possibility for Marty and Seth to be together again. Thus, as president of the group was only meant to escalate the tension between Seth and Nadia. Marty's design has been reworked as well. Too many characters were dark arcade, hence the decision to diversify our style. Which worked well with the knights and all. The fact that they don't have to wear black. Neon Alexander Razan, date of birth February 22, 2279. The story of Brandon Fernet and his criminal organization, the Scarlet Worms, was decided for the 2012 version of the game. In other versions, the head of the Scarlet Worms was a criminal mob whose motives did not encompass revenge. Thus, Nigel Burian in that case was merely a power hungry traitor, corrupted by the Scarlet Worms throughout the promise of money and prestige. 
Go on, dial. I want to see dial here. Dial a right Cedar is Ego Stan 2270. Initially, Dial was planned to be male, Neville Cedar's older brother. Her eagle form was also a later addition. In Tia's first version, Dial used the Soul Split technique during the Crimson Eclipse, but without possessing the body of an Arcane Sparrow. Instead, he found refuge in the body of an Owl, which was meant to follow the set along his in his adventures. Never give up. Never. Never. Owl is a Vertigris, date of birth January 1, 2298. 2191, sorry. Alison's death was conceived during the development of Tia 2002 reboot. Initially, the young Exit was planned to follow the party to the very end of the story. The idea of making her meet a trad again allowed us to raise the stakes of the plot while also making her feel more real, rather than a mere comic relief. Otherwise, the role in the story risked to appear flat after her fight with Seth. Her death and her return as Veer, paradoxically, allowed us to keep this important character in the spotlight for a longer period. Virus design inspired by Zero from the Mega Man Zero series developed by Capcom. Yeah, pretty much, more or less. Yeah, I also heard that basically she would have like no reason to be in the party after the off mark, after the off way mark. She had like no um, uh, purpose and like no cutscenes or no dialogue, so a little off anyway. So that's why they decided to just kill her. Horus Kane, July 12, 2282. Horus is the first prototype of the Zal series, but this hasn't always been true. Making Horus a revified cyborg was in fact the decision that was made shortly before Tia's 2013 demo release. In the previous version, Horus had simply lost an eye during his fight with Seth. Along with the idea of making him a test zombie, the character of his elder, Horus Doctor and Lover, came into being. And we have Young Neon. Neon Sandra is on, same date of birth. Neon's story has been tragic from its very inception, but Tia's reboot made it considerably more bitter. The losses of his wife, Kid, and Limb were all decided in the second version of the game. In the first version, Neon still- ah, come on, I skipped it, sorry, hang on. I accidentally hit the button. In the first version, Neon still lost his wife and his financial assets, but his wife was not pregnant and she was not subjected to any experiments. Neon was not severely wounded in the attack, thus he did not need time to recover, remaining with the group from that point until the end of the game. Oh yeah, a lot more to go through. God damn. My boy Vernell. Vernell Garuda. Julie 13, 2280. I'm thinking of his last name. It's gotta be a reference to something just cannot... It just can't come to my mind. Oh well. Vernell first appeared in the 2012 version of this game. In the prior version, his name was Gerald, and he was a human who followed Seth out of jealousy for his skills. As a known playable character, his role was much more limited. He would have died in Chapter 7, accidentally killed by Seth and Farion during their escape from Mystia. Sophet Revenet, August 23, 2282. Suffet was initially an unplayable character. Her role was to save our protagonist from the Skull Wimson Rowley. Her appearance and, soul and role changed in Tia's 2012 reboot, which also determined her part in Allison's death. Suffet was initially designed as a red headed Axel wearing thick glasses. Grand Telenium, September 1, 2168. Just like many other characters, Grant's role was first conceived in Tia 2012. In the earlier version of the game, Ladamis didn't have a mentor, no one controlled him. Mishra actually lived within his body, and he would have manifested spontaneously after the position in the first catalyst. Neville Razal Getty Sidoris, February 27, 2255. Neville's age drastically changed as the plot was being written. Initially, both him and Mishra were in their early 20s at the time of the Crimson Eclipse. Putting a 20 years old boy at the end at the head of the Altillian army wasn't believable, so Neville was made to be older. As a consequence, he's now portrayed as much a more mature character. Mishra Algol Elenium, September 1, 2268. In the first draft of the game's plot, Mishra would only have made himself known in the last chapter by leaving Latimer's body. The presence of Grant was not planned. Misha acted as a consequence of Vladimir's control from within his own body. At the end of the game, Misha was meant to appear once again in the young body inhabited at the time of the Crimson Eclipse. Nimrod's Janitor Merzen, April 14, 2165. Janitor Merzen proposed and signed the Treaty of Alders. His appearance in the game was script scripted at first. 
Nimran was hired with Tier Reboot in 2012 to connect the historical background to the in-game events in a meaningful way. This is also, this is also the reason why it's related to Elvid and Damian, which was an afterthought. And my favorite character of the game... Elvid Axad, April 1, 2284. Elvid was born after the release of the game's first demo in 2013. In a way, she forced their way into the cast for gameplay reasons. Up until that point, Dai was the only character of the game capable of using the alchemy skill. That was an ideal, because Dale joins the party in the very last chapter of the game. Without Elvid, many game sections in Chapter 8 force the player to proceed with an empty slide in the party. So yeah, my, my favorite character was created for gameplay purposes, because they needed an extra one. So they just created her like that. I love it. Galleon Verde Grey, October 15, 2260. The decision of making Galleon a playable character after the events of Chapter 8 was taken during TS development. The first draft of the plot did not include Alison's death, so there was no reason to make Galleon a prisoner. In his early version, Galleon was one of Seth's secret allies. He kept trusting his daughter, no matter the accusation leaved against her. Galleon would have helped Seth to come back to Rail and search and reach the Sidera ally. Once the plot was revived, Galleon emerged as a fundamental character of the story, prompting us to make him part of the primary cast. And finally, the most obscure playable character. Demi Aksad, November 16, 2278. Demi's first version was called Demi. Demi was a male Vashnar, a famous, famous member of the Mavericks and Ferium's mentor. Demi's role in the story hasn't changed much, but her background was completely rewritten. And those were all of the action figures. So that's it for this episode, actually. I'm just gonna see you guys at the ranking screen. I think the fastest way is to get the secret ending, which you don't know how to get, actually, but all you need to do, well, basically you just die at the final boss and a bunch of cutscenes starts, which you can skip if you want. But yeah, that's the way you get it. See you at the final screen of the game. All right, let's see what we got. And as you can see, open chest, we have been missing one. Again, I suspect. There's one chest in the game that does not increment the counter. But everything else is just 100%. So we got S in everything. Our final rank is S. We got everything. With that, I'll just see you guys in the final extra episode where we're going to check out a bunch of things that are in the game. There are like little extras, easter eggs, uh, uh, stuff that is not accessible. Uh, a bunch of, of things. And... A couple of endings that are not the main ones and the playable secret thing. I'll just see you guys in a couple of days.